Okay, so we're going to look at um, section 4.3. And we're going to be talking about polynomial functions. And functions just mean we're looking at the graphs of polynomials. Okay, so you're going to need from your packet um, the piece of paper that looks like this. Okay, so go grab that, pause the video. If you don't have the packet, um, you'll just have to draw that into your notes. Okay, so let's look at what we've got here. Okay, so there's different types of polynomials that we want to know. The first type is a constant. So a constant would be something like 12 or 3 or anything like that. We say that it's of 0 degree and the leading coefficient is 12. So it's sort of like we're saying something like 12x to the 0. Okay, that's what makes it have a degree of 0. And you'll see the pattern as we go along through here. Something that's linear would be like this. And it's like there's a little 1. We don't normally write that 1 there, but it's like there's a 1. So this is a first degree polynomial, and its leading coefficient is a 4. Okay, let's say something that's quadratic. It would be something like this. And we would say its degree is 2. Its leading coefficient is a 5. Now, the leading coefficient isn't necessarily the first number. It's the number in front of the term with the highest power. So as long as they're written in standard form, it will always be the first number. But watch out just in case they're not written in standard form. Okay, something that's a cubic would be like 8x cubed plus 12x squared minus 3x plus 1. Again, this is written in standard form. Um, the highest exponent is first, so that's its degree. That's its leading coefficient. And in general, so this is going to look kind of weird, but I want you to start getting used to looking at things like this. Eventually in math, we will see a lot of things in these types of form, or this type of form, I should say, and the only way you're going to learn about it is to practice it. So this seems very strange, but I want you to think about the a's. Those are just the coefficients. So it's like 8, 12, negative 3. And I would say like that this is on the, this is the 0, 1, 2, 3. This is on the third term, the second term, the first term. So see how it goes n, n minus 1. Same thing here. See how it goes n, n minus 1, 3, 2, 1, 0. Okay, so our leading coefficient then or excuse me, our degree is right here. This is an nth degree polynomial and our leading coefficient. So I know that looks a little bit weird, but again, start kind of looking at how that works. Okay, so let's look at the graphs of these um, polynomials. So here's a zero degree. That would be um, just a, like a y equals, in this case, y equals c. Okay, here's a linear function. Here's a quadratic function, degree two. This is a cubic function. This is a fourth degree function, and we call this a quartic. And this is a fifth degree function, and we call it a quintic. So what our goal in this section is to be able to graph all of these types of things without a calculator. So one of the things that I want you to notice is I want you to notice the zeros. Okay, so the zeros, um, remember that those are just x-intercepts. And it's not, it doesn't include the y-intercept, just the x. So this one has zero zeros. This has one zero. 
this has two zeros. Okay, right here we have three zeros. Right here, one, two, three, four. Remember, we don't count the y-axis. This has four zeros. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now you'll see that every time that we deal with a quadratic, it doesn't always have two zeros, but it can have at most two zeros. And if you think about from math two, I could add something that looked like that, that would just have one zero. Um, and I could have something that looked like that, that would have no zeros. So that number, that tells us the maximum number of zeros that it can have. Okay, so we've got here the maximum number of times the graph of a polynomial function may intersect the x-axis, whoops, is same, the same as, oops, they already put the, the degree. of the polynomial. So that is an important point to remember. If it's a fifth degree polynomial, it can have at most five zeros. If it's a fourth degree polynomial, it can have at most four. Remember that four zeros, that means four x-intercepts. Okay, so super important that you know this. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to trim this out and you're going to put it in your notebook with the heading that says 4.3 polynomial functions. That's it.